Hi, let me help you work through problem seven. Problem seven says for the decomposition of N2O5, which is dinitrogen pentoxide, uh, to four nitrogen dioxide and plus one oxygen, the following data were obtained for the reaction at 32 degrees Celsius. And what we have here is we have data for uh, time versus uh, concentration. We can see that as time increases, concentration goes down. Uh, now, um, uh, A says, use the data to graphically determine the rate law for the reaction. Please attach all three plots. And by this, it could be one plot with three lines on it, or it could be three separate plots. But in order to determine the rate law using plots, you have to do first uh, one plot of uh, concentration versus time. And then you have to do another plot. Oop. Of natural logarithm of concentration versus time. And so you can get that data. And what I would recommend that you do is inside Microsoft Excel, so you can uh, have a heading like this, and then if you type in equals LN, and then you open a parenthesis, and then you click on the point six, then the cell position will appear. You close the parenthesis and hit return, and then the natural logarithm goes into that cell in Microsoft Excel. <clears throat> And then you can copy and paste that down so that uh, it does all of the calculations for you. And the reason we're doing natural logarithm is because in the first order integrated rate law, there are natural logarithms, LNs, if you will. Then you also have to do one over a concentration. And how you do that is you just type one divided by and then you click on the point six. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then hit return. And you can copy and paste those down. And uh, the neat thing about plotting them like this is that of these three plots, only one of them will be linear. The other two will be uh, curved shapes. And the best way to tell if it's curved or straight is to use the R squared value. So the R squared value that's closest to one is going to be the most linear plot. And the most linear plot tells you what the rate law is. <clears throat> so for example, if the most linear plot is the natural logarithm one, let's see what we got here then that tells you that it's first order. And if it's uh, the most linear plot, that means the R squared closest to one is the one over a concentration plot. That means it's second order. And if the concentration versus time is the most linear, that means it's zeroth order. And all of these rate laws are on your um, uh, conversion equation sheet. So you can look them up. The integrated rate laws are what we're looking for here. So for example, if this one were second order, the second order integrated rate law, and it may or may not be, is one over concentration of A at time T, where A is the, whatever it is, N205 in this case, equals KT, plus one over concentration of whatever your reactant is at time zero. And I'm gonna, uh, yes. And so what this means for this one is if you plot one over a concentration of A versus time, you will get a straight line. And because this, right, this is what's called a linearization. So we are plotting the data in a way so that it can be a straight line. And what we're doing here is, 
So we are plotting as our y value. Wow, I did not expect that to happen, but that is fancy. Uh, one over concentration. So that's our y. Woohoo. Um, and then we're plotting x on our x-axis time. And if we do that and we get a straight line, then that means that first off, it is second order. And second off, it's a little hard to see. Let's see if here. So M, oh, this is fancy too. Oh, that must be my gel pen. M is our slope. So because M is the slope and Y equals MX plus B. Uh, and since the corresponding part is K, that means that, and I'm just going to go back to black here. Well, let's try that. So slope equals K, our rate constant. That's if it's second order. If it's first order, then you would do a plot of natural logarithm of concentration of A versus time. The way this works is this just happens to have a negative slope for the straight line. If it's r squared is closest to one, and you can put these all on the same graph as long as you check the r squared value to make sure which one's highest, and you should be able to tell that. It turns out that the first order integrated rate law is natural logarithm of concentration equals minus kt plus natural logarithm of concentration at time zero, and we might call this time t. And see the minus sign there means that the slope equals minus k. The slope is still related to the k, the rate constant for this. And, um, and then likewise, if we were to do the zeroth order, it's just concentration versus time. And it would have minus k as its slope. And that sometimes happens too. So uh, anyway, find which one it is. That will allow you to determine the slope, um, right? Excel will give you something like, excuse me, y equals k uh, mx plus b uh, as the equation. The m in the place of the m will be a number. That number is related to your k. It's the positive version of it in either of these three cases. So uh, for example, for the ln of concentration versus time, the slope will be negative. Take away the negative sign. That is your k value. And once you do that, you can put that k value in here. And you'll know that you have probably done it correctly when the k value is between the one at 22 and 42 degrees Celsius, because the k value is a function of temperature. It's not a linear function, but it does have to be between those two values. So you'll put it in there. And now we're ready to do part C. And I'll just clear this up a little bit so we can read it. Part C, oh, calculate. So part B, by the way, let me move this up. Yeah. Part B, calculate the rate constant. We just did that. It's the slope with that, with or without, it's uh, with a, a positive slope. So what it says, if the slope's negative, just make the number positive. So that's how you get this number C. Now we're on C. <clears throat> and for number C, we've got the value in there. Now, that's all you have to do for C. For D, it says from this information, this information right here, graphically determine the activation energy for the reaction. Please attach this plot. This time, this is what's called an Arrhenius plot and it is related to the Arrhenius equation. There are three different, three different versions of the Arrhenius equation on your conversion and equation sheets. One of them looks like this. K equals AE to the minus EA over RT. That's called the exponential version of what we're looking at, the Arrhenius equation. And all three of these versions relate the rate constant to the activation energy and temperature. And this A term, which we don't deal too much with, if you have questions about it, please ask. All right, there's another version. It goes like this. So ln of K 
uh, equals uh, minus EA over RT plus LN of A. And what we've done to the version on top is we've taken the natural log of the entire equation and natural logarithm and exponential E are opposites of each other. So they've canceled out for this term right here. Oh, I forgot a term. Uh, let's see if it'll let me do this. There we go. Um, do, 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 do. One. Oh, I put the T in there. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. So one over T plus LN of A. Can't remember exactly what version. I think this is closer to the version that's on the uh, conversion and equation sheet. Because now y equals mx plus b. We've set this up in a very specific way so that if we now plot the natural logarithm of y versus uh, 1 over temperature with t in Kelvin, we will again get a straight line. And that straight line will have a slope equals minus EA over R. And the R is the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, not the other one that we use with the equilibrium constants in gases, 0 0.08206. Both of those R values are on your conversion and equation sheet as well. But you're going to make this graph. Um, you can use the same kind of tricks that we did for the graph up here. So you can use Excel, type the data into Excel, and have Excel do the natural logarithms of the K values if you want. You can have uh, it do the one over temperature parts. Uh, you can even have it uh, put in the uh, adding the 273 um, to show you how that's done. All right, let's get rid of some of this stuff. And so if we wanted to add 273 to something, so this could be T and Kelvin, we could equal 273 plus and then highlight whatever Excel spot it is there. Then we could do uh, one over T and then click on whatever's next to it. And then LN of K equals LN, well, it's LN of K would be equals LN open parentheses. Go ahead and highlight that number, close the parentheses and hit return. This setup is particularly nice. I mean, and you're copying and pasting these all the way down here. This setup is particularly nice because in Microsoft Excel, whatever's on the left will be on the X axis and whatever's on the right will be on the Y axis. And that's how you want it for this graph. And that's a little more information about how to do the graphing for this assignment.